Miss Bennet, stand where you are. Do not move. Elizabeth's reverie burst. She was suddenly aware of the pounding of hooves and the rattling of an oncoming wagon. She looked up to see who had yelled at her in such an excited manner, and all thoughts of the infuriatingly pleasant Mr. Darcy fled her mind. A dog cart raced toward her, was very nearly upon her. She froze in place as commanded. The driver expertly guided the speeding vehicle, veering around her and continuing full pace along the lane. The cart turned, and the man pulled to a stop and jumped down. He gave her no mind, but rather hurried down the embankment toward the stream. She recognised him, not from his fine coat or tall beaver, but by his proud bearing, and perhaps his broad shoulders. Mr. Darcy, what are you about? She calmed the abandoned horse. The poor animal was large and fine, and seemed chagrined to be pulling the tiny dog cart and appreciative of Elizabeth's sympathy. But then Elizabeth observed what indeed Mr. Darcy was about, what had him in such dogged pursuit that he ignored her question. Her heart froze. He had reached the edge of the stream where a man lay sprawled in the grass, unconscious. It was her papa. No! Elizabeth grabbed up her skirt and petticoat and scrambled down through the wet weeds. Her heart came alive again, racing with fear. It practically pounded out of her breast. Whatever has happened? I was riding from Netherfield Park, having just set out for Kent, when a gentleman on the path ahead of me slipped in the mud and fell down the embankment. When I got to him, I saw that it was Mr. Bennet. Mr. Darcy cradled Papa in one arm and pushed open one eye, then the other. At that time he was conscious and knew me. Oh, my dear Papa, Elizabeth cried, does he live? With no care for propriety, she leaned across Mr. Darcy's lap to check her father's breath and listen to his heart. A weak beat, but one was present. I am afraid his leg is broken badly, and in two places, Mr. Darcy said. His pain made it impossible to lift him. I raced back to Netherfield Park for Bingley's carriage, but his party had already left in it for London. That explained the dog cart, but what did he mean by the Bingleys having left for London? I have dispatched a footman to Meryton to find the physician and bring him to Longbourn. Thank you, sir. There was no point saying that Mr. Jones, Meryton's apothecary, was not a physician. Papa groaned a little, and Elizabeth pressed his hand to her cheek. I thank Providence you were nearby when this happened. Can I trouble you to move aside, Miss Bennet? Mr. Darcy said. I should get Mr. Bennet onto the cart before he regains his senses. The sooner he is in a warm bed and that leg is set, the better his chances. Chances? With that, Mr. Darcy lifted Elizabeth's father as if he weighed no more than a child and carried him up the incline. Once Mr. Bennet was laid in the back of the vehicle, Mr. Darcy removed his own jacket and made it into a pillow, and Elizabeth spread her shawl over her poor papa. Darcy held out his hand to help Elizabeth up onto the driver's bench. At her hesitation, he said, I understand you wish to stay beside Mr. Bennet, but I am afraid you would only be jostled against his leg and cause more pain, perhaps further injury. You are correct, of course. Elizabeth allowed herself to be guided by Mr. Darcy, which was actually strangely comforting. As soon as she was seated, he jumped up beside her and urged the horse on. Riding in the cart, she lost the warming effect of exercise, and the chill in the weather began to creep in and take hold of her. They were yet about a quarter of a mile from Longbourn when a cold gust of wind blasted down the lane, ripping through the vegetation and chilled her to the bone. She shuddered against Mr. Darcy, and he absently put his arm around her. It was difficult to know which made her feel better, the warmth of his embrace 
or the assurance his strength imparted. 